Welcome back, friends. Now we begin the bittersweet uh, journey to leave Mulahe and head on down to hopefully Playa Coyote on the Bay of Conception. We've been in Mulahe for a month. A month is not enough still. We still love this place tremendously, but it is time to go. So we're gonna drive through town, stop and fill up our propane tank, our portable propane tank, and, uh, and then we gotta make one left-hand turn that I am not looking forward to from there. Should be relatively easy to get back on the one and get to the beaches. So let's get out of here. We made it out of Mulahe proper. We had a couple of close calls because it's very narrow and people like to park on the side of the road, but we made it in our 31 foot Class C camper van and uh, we are headed to the beach. We are going to camp on Coyote. That's one of our favorite beaches on the Bay of Conception and we're gonna spend Christmas there and have a great time. Well, we made it to Playa Coyote it is packed, which is what we expected. We got out of here later than we wanted to, but we found the perfect spot. Literally the last palapa tucked in between a whole bunch of other palapas, and uh, we didn't think we were gonna find a place. We thought we were gonna have to be further down the beach, kind of in a not as desirable place, but still on the beach, and it turned out perfect. So uh, we just spent about 20 minutes trying to level. The sand is super soft, not super soft, but it's soft enough that every time we put leveling blocks in, they sank down. But I think we're level now, so uh, let's go take a look at the spot. Good place to be. Now to set up camp for the next week. We'll be out here hanging out. Christmas is in two days and this is the perfect place to be. We've got our own palapa behind us. And uh, time to go set up. We're all set up. The dogs are all set up, which means it's time to go play. What do you say? What do you say? Huckleberry. Look at your mama. Let's see you shark then. Oh. <laughs> ready? Ready, go. go outside. He might, he might, he might run into the neighbor dogs. Come on, come on. Come on. He's unsure. There he goes. There he goes. Good boy. Smart enough. He's still trying to. Huckleberry, it's not the pool. <laughs> well, it's Christmas, and we've got some eager Christmas children. <laughs> we had some eager Christmas children. It's Christmas. It's Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. If our friends were here, you'd have your toy. <laughs> Abby, stop. <laughs> we, stop. Do, we do have you a Christmas present. It's just not here yet. Why do we have a new Christmas present for him? Because you destroyed your Wubba. 
Destroyed it. He, he ate it. Destroyed it. Well, here, here's a new frisbee. Woohoo! Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Look at how you got all excited. <laughs> oh, she got mad. Oop. Children share. <laughs> Merry Christmas. And we woke up to beautiful sunrise. It's a red sky in morning, so hopefully there's no sailors out there, but it was absolutely beautiful. Oh, and Christmas coffee. Yeah. Oh, Christmas coffee. Well, as nice as it has been here at Playa Coyote, it is time for us to leave. We are going to make a quick trip down to Loreto in that area. We were gonna bust out straight to La Paz, but uh, we got some good friends that we made. That's how it goes on the road. So we're gonna hang out with some friends in Loreto for a night, and then we'll continue on toward Los Barrios. Um, always bittersweet leaving the beach. This is one of our favorite places to visit and hang out. It's uh, 200 pesos a night, around $10 a night, so it's very affordable. And there's always friends to make. We made good friends with neighbors on all sides and uh, just had a great time. Paddle boarding, swimming, playing with the dogs, watching amazing sunrises, amazing sunsets. Of course, being able to share Christmas with all of the neighbors on the beach was a unique experience that we will remember for the rest of our lives. So on to the next chapter of this trip. Small world in Baja. As we're leaving Coyote Beach, we run into the family that um, we carried the tire for down here. Um, we've been kind of like trying to meet up with them, but things haven't worked out because they only have a short amount of time here in Baja and they wanted to go down to Cabo Pulmo. So I had told her that we were gonna be out on Coyote Beach for a few days for Christmas and maybe beyond. And so if they were happened to be driving north, they were gonna try to stop by. Well. As we're leaving Coyote, we, she was walking up the road and I recognized her. So we just stopped and uh, chatted with them. Pretty cool how we uh, just run into people uh, here. It's pretty neat. Nosotros de Posada, de Comuni Gringa, America, por Posada de Apoyo de Donation. Okay, y no, no ticket y no okay. problem. Okay. Okay, so what just happened is that we got shaken down by a police officer for right or wrong reasons. Um, I did park unofficially on the wrong side of the road in a big wide open road because to get to the campgrounds in Loreto, you have to go down pedestrian roads and they have them all blocked off, of course, because they're pedestrian roads. So I went to try to find out how to get to the RV park. If I had just moved the sign and driven down the pedestrian road, the cop never would have known me ever existed. But because I did what I thought was right and I parked on the side of the road so that I could go and find the RV park, um, 
he came up and wanted to ticket us. And then he said, um, I won't give you a ticket. This is all in Spanish. So he says, I won't give you a ticket if you make a donation to the police. And I said, a donation with my, my eyes rolling into the back of my head. I can't, donation? Um, how much? Quanto cuesta? And he said, you tell me how much. Huh? I said, 100 pesos. Because I mean, I've spent 100 pesos on worse. And he rolled his eyes into the back of his head and said, no, 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 no. And I said, how much? He said, uh, 300 pesos. I'm like, 300 pesos. And then, uh, anyway, we negotiated to where he was gonna take us to the campground. I said, how about 200 pesos? And he said, sure. And he brought out this little piece of paper. So if you're watching this and you have connections to Loretto first, we despise Loretto, we already have. And I don't want to be too negative, but it's a very touristy town. There's actually, what is it, Holland America? Holland America. Holland America cruise ship there now. So there's even more thousands of gringos there than already were. So the next thing is if you happen to be in Loretto and you have connections, there are police walking around with this piece of paper that says that it's a legitimate shakedown, that they're raising money, this donation, for the police department. So if you are in Loretto and you do know about Loretto, and you have connections in Loretto, I would personally be very curious to know why this exists, that they're walking around with a piece of paper in English that says that they're allowed to collect money from tourists to support the police department. Because uh, they went from, I'm gonna give you a ticket to just give us a donation and we'll let you go. Long story short, we have friends who were shaken down up in Ensenada for $150. So if I got shaken down for 200 pesos, it's not the end of the world. But we're out of Loretto. We are gone. We will not even bother to stop on the way back because it's one of those things, very, very bad taste in our mouths. We didn't want to stop anyway. We were going to stop to hang out with friends that we made. And now uh, that's gone. So we're on the road. We're driving towards Ciudad Constitution. And uh, we're going to be pushing sunset. But that's just how it is. Well, it is not a warm day here in Ciudad Constitucion. Um, we were just passing through, so we stopped at the campground last night. We stayed here two years ago on our way north when COVID was going on, and we were leaving Baja the first time. And it's a, it's a nice little campground. Not a whole lot to offer. We've always, well, the two times we've been here, we've been the only ones here. Um, it's a nice dirt, I say nice. It's a dirt area to park. It's a desert in Baja, so you get used to a lot of dirt and sand. Anyway, it's um, got the uh, warmish showers. Um, nothing spectacular. There's Wi-Fi, but you have to be close to the office. The city so far, the town has 3G service, cell service, so nothing spectacular to be expected when it comes to Wi-Fi and cellular service. But we are just passing through, so we're going to be heading south in just a couple minutes. Um, yesterday was, it was hard looking back and saying, wow, we woke up at the beach and we could have stayed at the beach for another day or two or a week. We had enough supplies to stay longer at Coyote, but we decided to leave and uh, blowing through Loretta wasn't the ideal situation. We actually, as we were pulling into town, we're like, oh man, this is a nice little town. And then we saw the cruise ship and then we had the incident with the cops and then we had the incident with not having a place to camp. And so uh, it was really frustrating yesterday, but now is a new day. We are going to hopefully be tonight at the next beach where we're going to stay for hopefully around a month or so uh, with some stops in between. So we're going to go ahead and get on the road and we've got about four hours to Los Perias, about two and a half to get to the Walmart in La Paz. We also have need to get the propane and um, water and what else? we got something else we're going to get. Um, but we're going to stop in La Paz for probably an hour and a half or two, knock, knock out all that stuff and then carry on to Los Perias. Well, we made it to Wally World. There's Sam's Club here. There's a Home Depot. Lots of amenities from quote unquote home back in the United States. So um, if you need to shop for anything that you would normally expect to find in a Walmart, you can almost always guarantee to find it. But it's not going to be exactly the same. Like lunch meat, I love lunch meat. It's called FUD, F-U-D, the brand. And it's not really good lunch meat. <clears throat> but I need it. I'm going to get some. So we're stopping here. Um, for the basics, Los Perias is a smaller town, bigger than Mulahe, but smaller town, and um, we want to get some things that we know um, we're less likely to find in Los Perias while we're there for about a month. 
So we're going to be finding some healthier options here at this Walmart than what we can find in smaller stores in smaller towns like Los Barrios. So we're going to head in and grab all that stuff and we'll get back out, run some other errands. Let's go. Dear Diary, I have a lot to say about Los Barrios in the last two days of being here that did not make it on camera. And uh, so I have to confess some things about this place. It's not what I thought it was going to be. What about you? No, it's not. It wasn't, yeah. it wasn't what we remember it being. Um, well, we I mean, I remember there being a lot of gringos here. Lots so of, that's the same. Okay. But there's like, I feel like there's like a hundred thousand more yeah. <laughs> what there was last time. So we pulled into town and we camped in a campground, which is against our principles because it's $30 a night and that like completely blew our budget out. But our friends are in, in the campground and we wanted to hang out with them and see them before we went out to the Arroyo. So then the next day as planned, we left the campground, we went out to the Arroyo and it's packed, like crazy packed, too many people out there, soft sand, we can't get around, we can't find a place to camp. And so we did a little panic moment and that's the Dear Diary trying to vent my emotional baggage right now because uh, it's been pretty stressful the last two days. So we tucked our tail between our legs, came back to the campground, shelled out another $30, which again, completely blew us out of our, our budget um, and now we don't really know what's going to go on. I think, I think we're going to go back to Todos Santos is what we decided. And there's a yeah. big open area called La Pastora and we're hoping to camp there. It's like a big surf spot, but there's tons of space. It used to be a pasture and there's a lot of hard packed sand. All we're looking for is a place to go chill out because New Year's is in, well, New Year's Eve is tomorrow. Yeah. And, uh, we don't want to be around a crowd of rambunctious people all hours of the night. That's not who we are at this point in life. We'll be asleep by midnight, but uh, we just want to be somewhere chill. And so we're going to take a shot on that because the beaches in La Paz, we expect to be pretty busy. And uh, yeah, we, we've got a whole lot going on because we're actually thinking we might head back north. Yeah. Um, we really, really love Mulae and that area. And we're still waiting on our friends, Scott and Melissa and their kids to get down here. So there's a lot of ifs. And I think I just need a couple days to clear my mind dump all this emotional baggage on you and on the ocean tomorrow or when we get there this afternoon and uh, and hopefully have a place to camp. If not, I'm gonna probably have a, a, a mental breakdown. I'm predicting it right now. Um, I don't do well when my expectations are a certain level and I'm thinking we're gonna have a nice spot where we were last time out in Los Barrios. We camped sideways, so we had the ocean right where we wanted to see and look out or the sea. It was beautiful, it was amazing. We had two other groups of people with us or two other campers with us mm -hmm. kind of like in our own little campsite. It was really cool. We weren't exclusive. We weren't being like um, all to ourselves. We were inviting. We were talking with all the people around, but there just weren't so many people. Yeah. And this is like, it's shattering because I was like, oh, I could be in Los Barrios for a month if I can look out the window while I'm working and see the sea and watch the kite porters and that we can walk into town from time to time. and. We budgeted out our water, our power, all the stuff that we were planning on doing for the next month, basically. And now we're having to start from scratch. We're having to scrap the old plans and come up with the new. So we are called to wander. That's the good news. Like we always say, we're not called to arrive. So uh, we should be able to wander around. Problem is we, we just want to get settled. That's yeah. the purpose of this trip is to get settled, to put some quality work time in, in a beautiful place that we can enjoy. And that is not Los Barrios. So we're going to go ahead and wrap this episode wherever it is. And we're going to get on the road in just a minute. Thanks for being a part of our journey. Even though it is not as spectacular and exciting as we anticipated it being, you are still here with us and we appreciate it. And uh, yeah, if you haven't already done so, subscribe to our channel, send a positive comment. Let us know some of the challenges you've faced in the past where maybe your expectations were not met when you got to a certain place on the road or whatever. We'd love to hear some positive, encouraging things for the community of viewers out there, including yourselves. Thanks again for being a part of our journey and we'll check in with you later.